Well, hello, 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 and happy Saturday, everyone. I hope everybody is having a great Saturday and a kickoff to the great weekend so far. I want to welcome you to the show. My name is Don Terrell, and welcome to another great episode of The Color of Motion, where I like to say, Stories come in all shades. And I highlight people of color and diverse backgrounds in the industry of motion graphics, animation, visual effects, cartoons, and comics. This space that I am so, so passionate about. I want to thank you for uh, joining me uh, for this episode. Um Mr. Neil, I always like to give a shout out. Always appreciate you, Neil, supporting the show. Always tuning in. I hope everything is going well out in Las Vegas. You know the drill. Say hey, where you're tuning in from, so I can give you a shout out and uh, give you the props that you deserve for sure. Uh, but say, hey, where are you tuning in from? Uh, let me uh, let me know. You can catch me on all my social platforms here. Can make sure you connect with me uh, right here. Whoops, right here. This is the first time I messed it up in a while. Right here on all my uh, social channels. There, make sure you connect with me. Follow me. Give me a shout out. Uh, you know. Like I said, let me know what you think of the show so far, how it's been going, my, who I might get on, uh, might that you might want to see on that I can try and get, and uh, just any tips or suggestions. Always looking out and wanting to hear from my uh, Color Emotion family for sure. Uh, like I said, we are live on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook. Uh, but I do always highly encourage people to jump on over to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Don Terrell. Give a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell notification, um, check out all the other past great episodes, um, and just, you know, be a part of the community. Uh, Make sure that you do, if you are one of those ones that loves to check out the show from Facebook. Make sure you become a part of our new Facebook group community because that's where the show is broadcast from, from Facebook. Facebook.com slash groups slash The Color of Motion. Um, definitely don't want you to miss out on any of the episodes and all that's uh, going down with The Color of Motion. We got a lot of great new things uh, happening. Like I've been saying, the website, uh, we're looking to have that up by the end of the year, which is coming up fast uh, for sure. A lot of great uh, new swag items we're working to get in so that we can give uh, little swag boxes to our guests, have giveaways, uh, contests, uh, sell them on the website. You know, all of that. Hopefully, some of you have been checking out uh, some of the uh, little reels and shorts and, you know, before the show, little uh, videos that I've been doing on Instagram. Make sure you check us out on Instagram at The Color of Motion. I'll be doing a lot of before and after kind of uh, little reels and shorts. Maybe even do a few during this show. I might set up a little cam so you can kind of see during the show as well. Try and figure that out. But uh, definitely want you to, like I said, be a part of the community. Be active in it. Uh, we got a lot of great things happening in the Facebook group. A lot of industry news. Just some of the guests jumping in and commenting. So we want, definitely want to make it an engaging community for sure. 
So yeah, I'm just so excited to have you here uh, on the show with us on the show today. Super, super excited about my guest and friend today. Been looking forward to it for a while. Um, and so without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, my next guest and friend is a freelance writer with over 15 years of experience and is a graduate of the 2017 DC Comics New Talent Writers, New Talent Writer DC Workshop. His clients include DC Comics, 133 Art, Subsume Media, Blowfish Studios, New Agenda Publishing, and Son of Oak Game Studio. He is a writer, creator of Route 3, and Mind to Avenge, The Book of Layla. He is the series writer of Changa and Jade Obelisk, Retcon, The Autumn Fox Chronicles, co-writer, and Soul Nebula, The Counselors. He cre contributed to the Kamikaze Short Circuits comic book, Dark Universe prose fiction, and eight gunshots, prose fiction, anthologies. He is also the current editor and chief for, editor-in-chief, I always said that wrong, editor-in-chief for BlackSciFi.com. So please, everybody, help me welcome my very, very special guest and friend, Mr. Robert Jeffrey the second. Robert! Hey, what's going on? <laughs> How's it going, my friend? So super excited uh, to have you on the show and to really dive in. You got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things happening that I'm super excited to kind of talk about and show there. Uh, but so thankful That's that fun. you uh, taking a little time to join us and be a part of the Color of Motion family. No, thanks for having me. Like I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty hyped. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm hyped. So. Yeah, this is this is a genuine excitement. So I, I appreciate I, I appreciate the invite to be on here. No, thank you, thank you. Like I said, I am always honored to be uh, in the presence of great talent. Um, and oh, always man. super excited. Like I said, you got a lot of great things uh, starting to happen and coming out that we're going to dive into a little here. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I guess my first question was, when did you, when did the writing bug for you hit? So, you know, I always make the joke that, um, <laughs> Once I uh, I was I was born with a pen, pen and paper <laughs> in, in either hand, and I was uh, born at Michael Reese Hospital. Shout out to Chicago. Um, God, I don't even know if the hospital's open, but um, <laughs> anymore. But for as long as I can remember, um, I've just loved to write. I think you know I started it when I know it was like back in Chicago, so maybe you know like eight or nine. You know, starting at that point in terms of you know, writing short stories or at one point, um, <clears throat> I called myself becoming like the youngest novelist ever with writing a, a book called Robert's Time Machine, which you'll never see the light of day. It was well, maybe like, you'll go back and revisit it and revamp maybe. it. I mean, it was like martial arts meets time travel, you know, it's just like Power Rangers, you know, karate from that. And then, you know, my obsession with Back to the Future. And, um, and my cousins were involved. So I loved, you know, involving my cousins and yeah. my brother, you know, in these uh, crazy stories that I like, I enjoyed writing. But it, it, it started as early as when I was back in, you know, south side of Chicago. Gotcha, so. gotcha. So has it always been kind of this fantasy, sci-fi kind of writing? Or did you get into kind of just general you know, maybe horror or maybe, I mean, did you get into other kind of genres or was it always kind of sci-fi fantasy type? You know, it seems like it's, it's kind of, I've been stuck in a wheelhouse in, of, you know, sci-fi 
uh, superhero, you know, you know, type of stuff. Um, I have branched out, I guess, in more recent years to, you know, fantasy. Um, and uh, actually, one of the pieces of, of the prose fiction was a uh, cowboy fiction. You know, it was a, it was a Wild West adventure. So, mm. yeah, but starting out, it was, you know, primarily, you know, that type more more on the sci-fi side of things. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So how how key were your parents kind of growing up in encouraging, you know, this passion mm-hmm. for writing and storytelling? So my um, my mom always always say that she her she used to say yeah I don't understand it <laughs> but <laughs> I mean, just, just being real she was just like I don't understand it um, but but maybe do what makes you happy and that um, that was a very big motivate you know motivation so yeah. it wasn't you know I never had. You know, my mom feeling like, yo, this is too weird. <laughs> you know, let's, let's break out of that. Go, go out and, um, you know, run outside. And we were going outside and playing and stuff. So, but it wasn't like it was so weird that she was just like, nah, don't mess with that. But my dad, my dad, uh, you know, he, um, this was his world. You know, this mm. was, I always called my dad like the cool nerd. You know, yeah, I, got yeah. the, I got the nerd part from him, but not so much the cool part. Um, but he, um he he was he was the one that i would sit down and watch um you know star trek with or, yeah, yeah you know growing up in the 90s we had all of these uh syndicated sci-fi and fantasy shows like you know hercules and xena yeah uh, highlander there can only be one yeah you know, that type of thing. <laughs> um so that was that that was dad's you know dad could kind of relate he was the one that actually got me more into you know, Stephen King's Dark Tower series. Mm. He introduced me to Octavia Butler's books. Oh wow! Okay. Um, yeah, like that. That was a godsend. And actually, he was you know because my my, my parents were divorced. Yeah, uh, pretty pretty early on for me. So my dad was living down here in Atlanta. In Atlanta and you know, I was with my mom up in Chicago for my mom, my, my brother, and I. And he mailed up all of the issue ones of the Milestone Media books. Oh wow! So oh, yeah. we had Static icon blood syndicate hardware yeah um when those books started so you know he was the one that actually by sending those books and inadvertently helped me to realize that i could break in (laughs) you know have a chance to write these books because i saw i saw folks who were looking like me you know you know doing that type of stuff and uh but that was because dad was a nerd he went into a bookstore a comic book store and was just like whoa let me just send this stuff up to my kids and, yeah. and my mom's part she was buying those books for us from at drugstores yeah so you know so you know i was i was i was being motivated on both ends which yeah. was which was pretty awesome no that I, I think that's so key to have like i said such a great thing like i said your father mm-hmm. did as far as really fuel and your mother really feeling yeah. it because that's like you just said it's hard enough wanting to do it and not seeing anybody that looks like you or characters that look like you thinking that you can do it but then your parents being really active about finding those things um, Mm -hmm. to really inspire you Uh, obviously like you said milestone and i remember when milestone was just really kicking kicking off and really starting to Mm -hmm. gain traction you know that was a big influence for you what did you think when you first saw like static you know the comic book static and some of the you know hardware and some of the other characters they were creating so we um you know my brother and i like i said my mom used to buy um you know comics from you know the the drugstore or like walgreens or wherever she could find yeah uh we didn't have a comic book store on our side of town it just it just wasn't you had to drive into the city for that and there was only uh, my mom i don't think was going to drive us into the city (laughs) to get to get some comics but um so from the comics that I, we were collecting that we had collected or or I got them from like a cousin who was in the uh, Coast Guard and I would have his X-Men number ones, yeah. which I thought I was going to pay my way through college with and, <laughs> and stuff like that. I, that obsession or that love of, you know, the comic book 
medium just grew. You know, I just, I, I love the amazing Spider-Man. I love that, you know, the, the story of the Harlock hero, yeah. you know, he couldn't pay his bills. Lights yeah. were turned off, but yeah. he still had to go and punch Pot, Doc Ock or yeah. the X-Men where you had the story of the quote unquote others, you know, which was the closest kind of allegory to black folks in America, you yeah. know, except yeah. in yeah. this case, it was, it was a bunch of white kids, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you know, who were the mutants, but um, but even within those pages, you know, and this is creatively not really understanding, um, you know, outside of Stan Lee, you know, because Stan, Stan Lee was everywhere. Yeah. I, I got the impression that I didn't, I didn't see a lot of us behind the scenes, you know, so that was one thing. And on the pages of these books, um, we were always either a part of a team or kind of secondary. Now I know that there definitely were books which had us as leads, even in you know, like I said, at the early to mid nineties, but yeah. it wasn't to the amount that I wanted. Yeah. So when the when we got the milestone books, and you know, mind you, like this is before the internet. This is before uh, I sound old now. Before the internet, <laughs> you know, before, trust me, I, I'm with you there yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, before you had news like at the. I mean, every dang on minute just dropping. Yeah. Um, you know, kids, we're just growing up, going outside, playing, t- you know, uh, playing games and then Nintendo, Sega, uh, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Anyways, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm the hip hop, <laughs> hip hop head. But, um, but then also we, uh, and then watching Batman and X-Men on TV. So when my dad sent those books up to us, it was pretty big, you know, yeah. for me more so I think than my brother, maybe my brother kind of felt, felt the same thing, but, um, I also made it a point to let you know that, um, there were people like me behind yeah. the scenes, you yeah. know, there were people, um, there were people of color, there were, um, women, they were just, it was, it was a lot of different groups that I don't think that you saw creatively behind the scenes and that did something to me. So, um, in addition to that, we get these awesome stories yeah. of like static and like said stat icon was actually my favorite because I loved rocket. Yeah. Like I, I tell everybody to this day, if I could write, write a rocket short story, I, I could die happy. If it, <laughs> if it, if it, it could be a mini series or an ongoing series. That would be oh, awesome. Man. But, well, they're supposed to be, uh, uh, I know, uh, they're supposed to be kind of reworking, uh, they're, they're back. A lot of I mean, them, yeah, is, they're back now, yeah. reworking them. So it's it's interesting yeah. to see. And who knows? I'm pretty sure. Like I said, hopefully, maybe somebody will check out this episode and you know, <laughs> see from your con- lips to con- ears. contact Mr. Robert <laughs> Jeffrey to to pin an issue there for sure. Yeah, for sure. But, um, but yeah, those um, that the way that people talk about uh, the Dark Knight Returns or even Watchmen is like changing creatively for them. Yeah. When it came to comic books, Milestone did that for me. And yeah. actually they hold more weight to me than a lot of like high profile or high, you know, game changing comic yeah. books. Um, that, that was huge. So that, um, that let me, you know, like you said before, I saw people doing this and I was going to do it anyways, but <laughs> it was just great to see that. Yeah. So. No, I think they, they, like you said, just opened up this whole mm-hmm. new, well, it wasn't new, but this whole world that, like I said, was just all black heroes, mm-hmm. villains, everything was just, you know, really so well done. And like you said, the quality was just well done. The stories were just awesome. Yeah. And just, like I said, when I read about it, I was like, wow. It was, like you said, yeah. there's a black studio creating black comics and stuff. Yeah. And even though, like you said, you know, I, I grew up like like you on Spider-Man and things like that. But I also read like Luke Cage and some mm-hmm. of the other, you know, minor superhero characters that, you know, the mainstream did have. But they just didn't really dive into the backstory or really make the kid or flesh out the characters like they should have. So do you feel like, I mean, now during this time, obviously, you know, with the advent of black Panther and a lot of Mm -hmm. other things, how do you feel like this time is now moving forward? Um, it's beautiful. I mean, it's like this, um, it is so, it's beautiful. I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the word that comes to mind because, um, I always say indies, um, are killing it, you know, when it comes to, you know, black creators and the content that we're putting out, um, 
a lot of the larger companies seem always filled with what we're doing. And this, and this is how it often works. You know, you, you, you do your thing independently and yeah. then the, the big studios come a calling. <laughs> they so come a knocking. Have a lot, yeah, they come a knocking. So they're, all you have to do is do a search for um, black superheroes or black comic books or go to blacksci-fi.com yeah, and yeah. check out the many lists that we have there about, or even future articles and interviews with, you know, everyone, um, all the brothers and sisters and, you know, doing these stories or, you know, these storytellers, artists yeah. and writers and colorists and letterers and inkers, um, highlighting our experiences, um, you know, on the indie level. So yeah. um, that's where I got my foot in the door. And, you know, when I got into college, I started learning about, you know, the brother man's. I started learning about uh, Ekbach. Yeah. You know, I started, you know, so I, you know, it wasn't until like I got into college that I, I started learning about the black indie ex comic book explosion that it started. And, you know, I mean, actually going back as far as, you know, I'd say the twenties and thirties, I mean, even maybe even further, but like in the nineties, yeah. you had, um, this, ex you know, once again, this explosion of talent, which now, um, you see popping up at every other comic book show, <laughs> you yeah. know, you know, yeah. working the tables yeah. and, um, working, even having their works adapted to for film and television. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I, I always tell. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I go, go ahead and finish. I was just no. Ahead. I was just going to say. So, if you ever go to like a pop culture convention, a comic book convention, make a point to stop at Artist Alley. Don't just you know pick up endless prints of Venom and yeah. you know all the big, you know yeah. just I'm sorry like I I love it I mean I got the stuff hanging on my wall but yeah yeah set yeah. aside some of that cash to go support these yeah. indies yeah. you know who are usually telling really good stories no yeah and and it's funny you brought up that point I'm gonna throw Mr. Uh, Soul Hammer there appreciate <laughs> you the Don Cordelius of digital <laughs> the Don Cordelius of digital arts and I'm doing my Don Cornelius voice I'm sorry. <laughs> animation and comics do your thing appreciate you tuning in there brother uh but now i was uh saying it's interesting that you made that point because mm -hmm. we just had uh, a few months ago houston comic palooza and mm -hmm. uh you know i went with some friends of mine and and i don't know if it's regional um but mm -hmm. just on the and on the mainstream there was like uh, I could count, I guess, on one hand, the number of black, you know, uh, comic book uh, mm -hmm. artists that were there pushing their titles and putting yeah. their titles out. Um, do you find it, I mean, maybe it's different in Atlanta or maybe it's more of a, you know, specific black Comic Con or something. I know they have a black, com like a black Comic Con in in new york mm -hmm. and things like that but now yeah. when you do when you're doing conventions now do you see uh more uh independent black creators there mm -hmm. or do, is it still kind of this disparaging you know balance uh i well i i i've always seen a lot of us you know yeah. at the shows because we're trying we're trying to make money um I started doing shows back in maybe like mid 2000s. Yeah. You know, as, as, a, as a fan, I started in 2000. And then as a creator, you know, behind the table, maybe like mid 2000s. Um, and wherever I go, I see a presence of black creators, you know, so the one of the one of the things, though, is that there are many conventions that are focused on you know, the, the black diaspora, you know, yeah. the, you know, the African American, African American experience. I mean, you have, um, like you said, you have Ekbach, the East Coast Black Age of Comics Convention. You have uh, up in Philly, you have uh, MechaCon. Yeah. Um, up in Detroit, you have uh, OnyxCon down here in Atlanta. And then you have BlurredCon uh, also, which is in the D.C. area. You know, I, th I think the D.C. area in Virginia, D.C., um, and then there's a um, black comic book convention out in California that takes place every year. And then the other one, it's skipping, it's, it's, it's getting my mind, but uh, yeah. Brooklyn, the, the one you mentioned at Schaumburg. Yeah. So, yeah. um, 
as the years have progressed, I, there are conventions that are definitely focused more on our experience where you will see a lot of us. But if it is just, you know, just, a, you know, kind of a general, you know, comic book convention, uh, there are a lot more creators out there than I, I mean, um, than, you know, I was seeing like way back when, yeah. you know, when I had started. Uh, it's this, um, because there's, there's kind of, there's a hunger, you know, I feel for the quality material that we're, we're providing. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, and and I think I've asked this with a couple of other, you know, comic book creators, um, and I'm you know curious what your thoughts were. What I mean, obviously, as an independent, you know, it's you're going, you know, budget wise, having to deal. It's not like DC Comics or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Is that? Do you find that that's the biggest challenge? Just you know, procuring the funds to put together issues and really promote your work as an independent. What's what's the challenge for you as a independent kind of content creator? Yeah, I think uh, money is definitely is one part. You know, is is, a, is always going to be a part of it, a big part of it. Because um, you you know you would love to. Don't be putting out books you yeah. know, every every month, not every day, <laughs> every month. Yeah. Um, and but often you you find yourself, um, you know, relegating your schedule to, um, in such a way that you're you're working with, you know, trying to find that money. So it's just like if you need to do something like every every three months, you know, that that might be a good route to go, or maybe you can only release like two books a year. You know, I mean, that's that's just kind of how it is. But money, money is one one big factor. The other thing for me, I keep going back to this, you know, calling myself old is figuring out the social media game. Like mm. as far as trying to reach. Yeah. Uh, that's why I'm like very um, like I I'm in awe of people like yourself. Um, <laughs> I have not like I <laughs> I have not been able to crack that side of things in terms of kind of getting more eyes on my on my yeah. product or yeah. my you know or the or the work that I do like I'm I with the now you know hustling up the work you know that's not a problem you know I you know I have the you know my, my portfolio of work my work at work ethic and you know hitting deadlines so that's never an issue but as far as I always tell people that I make the most money um in terms of you know sales yeah uh doing shows not mm. from online sales oh it's wow. just kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, but that's more of me. I mean, that's not every yeah. creator. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but I I don't know. I do boring stuff like you know, hey, this is the book that I'm reading. <laughs> Check this out. Um, and you see this punching bag that I bought. I'm working out, you know, because of stress. You know, I'm like, I um, you know, it's it's really that that is one, uh, you know, nut that I haven't been able to crack open because yeah. I. I would if I had the funds on the regular, I would hire somebody to work, you know, social media. For yeah, me. yeah, yeah. Trust me, but I yeah, feel but, you. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, but that that is one thing as far as like trying to you know build an, enough of an online presence where I could get like at least a couple of monthly sales. Yeah, you know, yeah, but yeah. Um, but those are two things: money and, and you know, trying not to you know be the weird quiet guy online yeah. i guess i don't know <laughs> well i think i think all creatives are kind of introvert you know the kind of quiet right, right. introverts which i think yeah, is yeah, kind yeah. of a, 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 a synonymous with creator for most creators you know a lot of there are a few out there but yeah. i'm like i said and i told you this kind of before you know the show started mm -hmm. i'm just honored to really be a small part in really pushing uh and showing the titles and things that you're doing to really help you. And I definitely mm -hmm. understand, you know, it's, it's a social, you know, social world and it, it's a lot of work really getting out there. Yeah. Um, and we are going to take a look at um, a lot more of his work here for sure. Like I said, uh, Robert's got a lot of great things coming out, but here's just some of the titles that he's worked on um, and written for. Just, you know, one the artwork is great, um, but the stories behind them are just, you know, fascinating for sure. And like I said, we're going to talk about a lot of the uh, things that you're doing because you're also a uh, game writer as well. 
Um, mm -hmm. What for you, I mean, is, and I'm curious, outside of the trailer, you know, for mm -hmm. a game, how do, you, how do you, this is DC, and we're going to talk a little bit about your, you know, time doing some DC stuff, but how, mm -hmm. I mean, what is the difference for writing for a comic book? Obviously, it's a long form, you know, story, mm -hmm. as opposed to a video game. I mean, how do you write for a video game? So, um, for me, with the, with the video game side of things, without, um, what do you say, breaking the NDA, I've, um, I've been helping out with the lore building side of things, um, which for me is, is more prose oriented, you know, mm -hmm. it's just that, you know, that, that type of thing. Um, so that's been, I've been kind of building up my chops with, with that. Um, and with, um, and as far as the video game scripting side of things, it's a matter of, um, figuring out how you know the storytelling that you're doing aligns with the gameplay hmm. you know so that's that's kind of a huge thing so with comic books it's you know you're scripting scenes or writing scenes for artists to you know to turn into a page yeah. you know um which is um you know it's 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 funny because that's pretty much what i've been doing you know that's that's my been my bread and butter for a minute so you know readjusting my mindset to you know something as far as like with the video game work um has been a learning process but what has helped me out has been i always say like the creative you know creative storytelling skills that i've you know maintained yeah. in comic books and and also prose but um but definitely as far as with gaming you the game you know with the game writing or video game writing uh, it's been a lot of lore building, um, and but acknowledging, like I said, when it, you know, with the actual scripting, just keeping how the gameplay is gonna you know mix in with you know what you're writing and the you know the dialogue and and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and it's and it's interesting because and I've had a um, he was a game developer um, mm -hmm. and 3D guy, but you know games are such a big it's such a big industry and mm -hmm. the way like i said a lot of these um game trailers are they're almost a movie in and of themselves mm -hmm. and creating characters for that uh, do you find like i said your kind of passion is more or i guess your kind of love is more comic books and writing for that as opposed to mm -hmm. games or I mean, is it just the whole, the writing process as a whole? I'm kind of getting to the point where it's just the writing process as a whole. It's um, one of the things that I always told myself, and this is a promise that I'm getting close to keeping, is that um, I was going to take care of my family doing what I love doing, uh, which is writing yeah. in any shape, form, or fashion. Um so when I was, you know, back in, you know, I wanted to be a comic writer definitely when I was younger, but I spent, you know, the years in college and then also my first few years out of college freelance writing as a journalist. So for the, for the Atlanta Voice newspaper. So um, comics didn't really come into play until I had built my portfolio up to the point with the, with the um, newspaper writing um, where they could see that I, you know, I could meet a deadline. I could, you know, I could, you know, learn how to, you know, you know, write a script. So, yeah. but for as long as, because I, you know, it's, it's always one of those things where um, I wanted to be happy doing what, and making money, you know, doing what I love doing. And, you know, growing up, sometimes you're surrounded by, you know, folks who aren't able to do that. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, and then, like I said, you got to work a job. I mean, I, 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 out of, you know, coming out of college, I was working freelance, you know, working for the Illinois Voice. But by day, um, by day, I was an intrepid data entry <laughs> specialist. You know what I mean? That, just real, like, after you know, hours, like, just open up the cape and just exactly. super well, I, used, I mean, I tell the stories of like, I, I was working, um, it was either customer service, data entry, whatever. Yeah. It was always like one of those, you know, I could type fast or talk yeah. to people on the phone. I uh, hated, I hated to talk to them on the phone. So I just like type fast. So. <laughs> Um, but I would literally at 4.30 or 4 o'clock 
um, you know, shut down my computer at the job and then run down to a isolated, like kind of a lunch park area that we had in the back of this, like, you know, four story corporate yeah. building. And I would do, be doing interviews, you know, for the Atlanta voice newspaper, you know, with 285 traffic on one side, or I would be in my car and then they were like, Hey, do you hear that? I'm like, no, I'm, I'm in my office. You know, that type of, you know, that's the hustle. I mean, yeah. that's just what it is. Yeah. So that's that I've had that mindset for a minute. And I, um, whenever, um, whenever I, I feel myself kind of backsliding to what I had to do, I'm just like, no, this is, you gonna maintain this writing thing, yeah. so it's like it's kind of like a mini obsession, which is not good at times if you're married to somebody like me. Yeah. Um. So it's just like, and I, you know, and that's where because if you self doubt yourself, if you, you doubt yourself with wanting to, you know, this dream or this passion, then sometimes it's not a, you know, good look. Anxiety, stress, and depression are yeah three of the things that kind of kick my butt. You know, sometimes, no, but I, I definitely um. Feel you. Yeah. yeah, but like you said, it's it's um, it's this obsession to want to do something that will make me happy and take care of my family. Yeah, so. yeah, no, and and you're definitely definitely doing it there, uh, brother, for sure. Um, Thank you, man. Like I said, you've got a lot of kind of you know interesting things starting to happen. This being one of them. Um, writing for After Image, which they just uh, started uh, their Kickstarter campaign, and going to show a little bit of uh, the trailer. And again, for everybody that's just tuning in, I'm sitting down having a great conversation with my friend, Mr. Robert Jeffrey II, uh, comic book and video game writer. Um, this is a, uh, issue that, uh, he just, or a title that he just mm -hmm. pinned and they have just kicked off the Kickstarter and all these, like I said, link to the Kickstarter, uh, link to, and we're going to dive into, uh, the, uh, video game that, uh, you just pinned release, um, and talk about that as well. But uh, definitely want to highlight the Kickstarter and the link is all this. All the links are going to be in the show notes that you can check out. Go support for sure. We definitely have to support uh, this brother and the work that he's doing. That's the way it gets out, and that's the way we keep it going uh, for sure. I know I had a uh, little struggle with this the last time, but I think I got it down. Uh, this time where we could play it and show it. Uh, let me kick this and see if I can get this uh, going here. Uh, put in a camera. Oops, I think that's the right camera. I had it right. Uh, okay, we're going to do this. Show secondary display. Okay, when you know now that I am having issues with it now. I did this the last time. I should have practiced this beforehand. I think this is it. And secondary display. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay. We are having some fun today. <laughs> okay. I think this is. Uh, okay. Bear with me, guys. I know I had this before, and no, I should have done it. Tried it before. Here we are. Secondary display. 
Oh, okay. I know where I messed up. Here we go. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Is this the way it goes with uh, <laughs> live streaming? But I got it down now. Oh, no All problem. right. So guys, they just kicked off their Kickstarter uh, for it. Uh, looks like a super great title for sure. Um, tell me, I mean, how did this project come about? And kind of tell a little bit about After Image and the story and how you kind of came up with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so After Image is the brainchild of um, Brandon um, is deadly. He's um, the owner and uh, a CEO of um, the publisher Concept Moon Studios that um, publishes the series. So he actually <clears throat> hired hired me to you know to to write the series to write you know After Image. So uh, it's an awesome gig, <laughs> which is which I enjoy. Um, but he, um, you know, there's a larger universe that he's he's building and which after image is a part of so you know as far as it you know the gist of the story it's a um we've already established you know at least in this universe that he's he's a superhero so it's not uh, an origin story you know it's, i think that's something that we will dig into in later story arcs but as far as with um this the uh, the first story arc is like three issues and we're um focusing on the themes of mil the milita militarization of um, the police, you know, mm -hmm. and how, uh, you know, touching on aspects of that in today's world, but then also um, how, you know, this affects a, a black kid being a, a superhero, yeah. you know, in, yeah. in, in this universe. But then outside of that, you have other interests who um, aren't police affiliated, who aren't really too keen on, you know, the actions that he's taking so you know this is um uh he's in his i guess regular everyday you know kind of persona he's a uh, child he's a teen within the foster system so we're, we're digging into those elements mm. um has a awesome friend and partner who you saw in the uh, trailer named um lauren and you know she's you know helping him you know, deal with kind of both sides of the coin, you know, as far as just, you know, being a regular teenager, but then also dealing with this new threat, you know, that we, we toss into the mix. So um, a lot of things, you know, it's, it's a, we always, always try to do the whole edutainment you know, type side of things without yeah. crowd beating yeah. you know, people as far as with the story, but it is something that you know, outside of, I, I think um, route three, you know, which is actually in Route 3 is not even, you know, I what I'd say a kind of a typical superhero story. You know, outside of the work that I did for DC, After Images, the first time in a while that I've been able to do something superhero, you know, yeah. related, you yeah. know, or like a, you know, quote unquote, typical comic book story. But I, I, you know, when I was talking to Brandon and our esteemed um, editor, Brian Lambert, uh, shout out to Wingless Comics, he um i told you know them that i wanted to you know and, and i asked if i could toss in you know themes or ideas or things that we're dealing with in our own world um into the story of after images you know it's not just going him going out and fighting crime and taking names you know there's yeah. something there's something a little bit you know kind of bigger you know to it and um and i think we've accomplished you know uh telling a good story where people could kind of come away from it and, you know, say like, wow, you know, this is, you know, I've never looked at something from this perspective before. And um, so right now, you know, script wise, I'm four or five issues into the series as far as script. So there's more story to be told, awesome. you know, outside awesome. of just this first issue. So, so what's but, his, um, his, you know, he's a superhero. So it looks like after, and I'm just guessing mm -hmm. after image, what's his super power, I guess. Um, the 
It's uh, in this case, it's teleportation. Teleportation. Okay. Yeah. So does yeah. that? I mean, obviously, that's I think the sign of a good comic that can kind of subtly weave in today's topics and kind of, you know, the narrative of what's going on in society as a whole mm -hmm. without, like you said, kind of browbeating, but right. doing it in an entertaining way. Do you find that that's, I mean, like you said, you've got a lot of things to pull from the, mm -hmm. the foster care system, um, just the police uh, and all the things uh, that's going on, do you find that that makes it a little bit easier, or do you, like I said, like to stay in the kind of pure fantastical, you know, fantastical world, or is it good a good thing to pull in these, like I said, everyday things that go on that really weave into this narrative? I. I like to do both, <laughs> you know, so I, you know, I, I like to do both. I find that there's, um, you know, with something like After Image, with uh, something like, um, like I said, Route 3, you know, Route, Route 3 is, you know, my response to, you know, in part to, you know, the direction the country took after 9-11, um, mm. you know, so it's this whole thing of what lengths will a governing party or a larger, you know, body go to, to keep themselves safe? And will it be at the detriment of a high school teenager from Stone Mountain, Georgia? Mm. Um, you know, and then actually in the, in the case of the mental health, you know, I mean, one of the biggest things that uh, the protagonist of Route 3, Sean Anderson, is dealing with is the loss of his mother, you know, from cancer. Um, so this is a... This is a guy who is dealing with, you know, um, depression. You know, he's, he's dealing with, like I said, this loss in his own way. And he's been, you know, kind of broken to a certain extent. And then he wakes up one morning to find out he has all these world changing abilities. So it's, you know, in, in addition to, you know, paralleling that with the story of, you know, the um, how, you know, we reacted to you know, the, the events of something like 9-11 or like yeah. the whole war on terror. Yeah. Um, you have this kid who is simply trying to be a teenager, but also deal with this loss of, you know, one of the main central people in his life who got him, who loved him, enjoyed you know, him for being the kid that he was. And, um, you know, now he, he, he has to essentially save the world from itself. Um, so that's, so, you know, those are more of the heavier themed, you know, types of things um, that I've personally kind of written or been a part of. But then on the other side of it, you know, we have something where I've adapted. Um, there's a there's a novel series by a talented author named Milton Davis. You actually need to get him on your show if you get a chance mm, with Milton Davis. Okay. But the name of the series, like you, you mentioned in the bio, is Changa and the Jade Obelisk. And um, I, I was brought on to adapt that into a comic book series. And it's... Um, it's a fantasy adventure set uh, back in you know ancient Africa. So oh, okay. it's um, it's people of color, you know, being involved in these fantastical events, you know, set within a real world background of um, of Africa, you know, in Asia. Yeah. Uh, but then also, um, but when I write that, that's like pure adventure. You know, that's like yeah. fantasy yeah. adventure. It's yeah. just, you know, I mean, I think there are definitely some more. There are themes that you can take from it, but. Um, for me, it's just like, you know, watching these fight scenes or these you know, awesome line of dialogue, lines of dialogue come to life on the page makes me, you know, feel happy and I'm just having fun with writing that. So for me, I, and that's one of the things that I kind of, vow, I, I'm happy I can say with my career is that I can do just about anything, yeah. Um, yeah. which makes me more marketable, um, especially being a person of color in this industry. Yeah. It just is what it is. Like, yeah. um, I, I, you know, there are people who can do one thing pretty well, and that's and that's awesome. That's awesome. I, for me personally, I don't feel I have that liberty. So that's where I try to learn as much as I can about these different fields of writing, and and also, like you said, the different genres of the different types. You know, yeah. more message oriented, yeah. you know, things are just 
you know, let's just open a book and get some big sci-fi bombastic action. <laughs> so, yeah, you don't want, it, don't want it, uh, a theme or a story. I just want some action sci-fi type Yeah, of I mean, thing. sometimes you just, you just, that's just what you want. I mean, yeah. so. No, I, I, I definitely uh, feel you. I'm curious as, as a writer, um, because I know, you know, I kind of get how it is on the other side. Of it. We always say, you know, uh, like when, uh, like for DC or, or yeah. you know, uh, Marvel, having, you know, white writers write for a black character don't give it the uh, kind of authentic, authenticity or kind mm -hmm. of flavor that a black character or any diverse character would have. Do you find it challenging, like when you write for uh characters out other than black mm -hmm. like for to kind of like i said say a white character or an asian character i mean as a writer that's a black writer writing for i think it would i would figure it would be kind of the same trying to get that that the flavor of the the ethnicity of mm -hmm. like i said either an asian character or a white character or anything like that or do you just mm -hmm. write to the personality of the character and not think about the race you um you got to do your homework you <laughs> know so that's the biggest thing yeah um if i'm writing from the perspective of a of a life that i have not lived it does a disservice to yeah. whoever's reading the story to be like i got this um that doesn't work and that's why often you see in certain circumstances a lot of circumstances where people have written from our perspective yeah you know you could tell that the most that they did was watch a couple of black exploitation <laughs> movies and say yeah. i got this or they went and watched boys in the hood or yeah, you know yeah, one yeah. of those or you know or those type you know other movies and was like i got this and it's just like no you don't yeah. So I have more respect for somebody who, if they are from a different background of which they are not, they're not a part of, um, that they actually go and do the homework, you know, and do this. So I have to do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't do that. Um, the other thing is you are, like I said, if that, as far as like, you, you want to, if you want to write from a different uh, cultural perspective, um, the other part of that is that, um, doing the research there was something else i was going to say but also you know just just write the person as as um as human yeah. you know there there are there are plenty of times where you you have circumstances where people are just written as stereotypes um rather than you know fully fleshed out well-rounded yeah. um and you know and even with you know with black folks i mean we're not all monolithic yeah so yeah. you know my situation is not the same as some other person's situation yeah. i mean i can tell you right now my brother and i are not the same like we love each other i mean we're like <laughs> no, trust me, we're, yeah. two, we're two totally different dudes but there there have been times where i've met my brother's friends and like you oddball's brother and i'm like i'm like first of all you call him oddball <laughs> <laughs> and uh and it's just like and, uh, you know I'm, i know him as brandon you know so oh, man. but that's that's the other thing so even when you're writing within um and, and my book has nothing but black folks in it yeah i mean everybody's not going to sound the same i yeah. mean there's people yeah that, even within you know, the black are, yeah there's such yeah, I mean, a diversity and and I think it's something that needs to be worked on. I think it's something that's getting better because you have better representation, you know, behind the scenes of like these TV shows and these movies and comic book series that we like. Like I, you know, I cannot say what the experience of being a person of the LGBTQ experience plus experience is. Yeah. So I have to do my homework. Yeah. You know, that that type of thing. So um and it makes you a better writer. Yeah. I, I feel. So or a yeah. better creator. Yeah. Yeah. Uh and you know, I'm curious. Um, because you kind of touched on it a little with the when we were talking about the social media. I mean, mm -hmm. do you feel, and I always like to say, now is a great time for, for content creators because they have so many. Do you feel the same way that now is really a great time for especially maybe the independent content creator, uh, comic book artist or comic writer mm -hmm. or writer because you've got so many channels out there to put your work you got kickstarter to mm -hmm. kind of fund it um that now is really a great time for content creators 
It is great. It is a great time. Um, I think that if you can properly utilize the medium of the intranet, you know, the yeah. internet, then you can reach so many people. You can tell stories with well-crafted and thought out stories um, on the um, a platform that will like say get your stuff out to you know yeah. to a lot of folks um and you have the freedom to tell the stories that you want now you definitely can go the route of working with indie publishers uh, mainstream publishers if you can get the get them to open the doors uh, or you can self-publish yeah. you know but self-publishing working with a, a publishing company will you know is one route to go i know that like the webtoons platform has blown up in, in like so many ways, I mean, and you have more manga, anime inspired yeah. Yeah. stories that are be telling on being told on that front. I had, you have people who are doing web comics on Instagram, yeah. you know, yeah. um, and are finding a huge <laughs> platform of fans, yeah. including, you know, folks like myself, uh, who are just like coming, you know, popping up every week, weekend or week to, to read what you have. So I, I think that, um, it's like the force. You know, as I said, my Star Trek, you know, sorry, sorry, Star Trek fans. I got to I gotta, you know, reference Star Wars. It's like if you properly use the force, hey, you know, you can do great things. If you don't, you know, use the force so well, you know, you can your, your legs get burned off and your face and whatever. So um, or sliced off. I'm sorry. Um, sliced. But um, it's uh, it's all about how you use it. I mean, I've yeah. seen indie creators I always you know shout out to T the tuskegee airs team oh, Marcus yeah. williams yeah, and Brett Marcus, burnham like yeah. their their reach is so massive yeah you know with with that property um because it's it's a quality story great great writing great art um but they are you know they they are always on the road you know at those shows yeah um, but they wow. know how to grow their reach online so that when they go to these shows because of the reach that they've built up online uh, people are showing up in cosplay yeah. you know, outfits yeah. but based on their characters. And that's, that's huge. And they're selling books and selling prints. Um, yeah. But it goes back to how they've done in terms of social media and just building. But I think that um, using this platform, you know, of the internet can, you can build a career out of it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, no, definitely. Uh, and, and it's funny because like you said, I think I did, did just check out a video of uh, the your most recent Comic Con that you had there in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Oh yeah, Dragon Con. Dragon. Yeah, Con. and they were interviewing mm -hmm. Marcus and his partner, yeah. and he was saying, yep. "Yeah, man, we saw people mm -hmm. dressed up as she know, wrote shit. Yeah, <laughs> just like, yeah. Yeah. That lets you <laughs> know it's like okay, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, like I said, it is. It is. I think. Um, and it was amazing to me, which is why I love doing this show, because you get to meet so many great content creators that you wouldn't have ordinarily saw or, or connected with, such as yourself, such as Marcus um, and, you know, Tuskegee Air, such as Joshua Leonard and Team Supreme, what he's doing mm -hmm. with that. There's just so many. And I've connected with, you know, so many uh, content creators just in other countries, <clears throat> you know, Africa is really starting to, yeah. you know, a lot of great content out of Africa mm -hmm. is really starting to come out and things like that. So the internet mm -hmm. really has made it such a small world where, um, yeah. like you said, for the independent creator that, you know, you don't necessarily have to go that route because like we mentioned earlier, you get enough following, the big dogs are going to come knocking at your door sooner or later, you know, wanting to get something from you and, and wanting mm -hmm. to work with you. Yeah. Yeah. I've, like I said, I've seen it happen. I mean, I've seen it happen with, um, you know, I, the artist on route three, Sean Hill is uh, doing artwork uh, or has art duties on a, upcoming Luke Cage series, mm. you know, so for Marvel, so, it, and that, and they, they saw his work, you know, so it's just like, yo, <laughs> you know, so it's like, and that's not the only story like that, that I've heard. I mean, yeah, so shout, yeah, out to, no. shout out to Sean Hill. Yeah, no, um, for sure. It, it's like yeah. I said, you'd be surprised. They're doing the, and I tell people there's, you know, those execs and the people, hiring people for a lot mm -hmm. of companies are doing the same thing we're doing looking through the internet, looking at work yeah. and looking at talent and 
you know. And I always, and I give, like I said, Netflix. I always give Netflix a shout out because I feel like mm-hmm. they're the leader and they're really cranking out a lot of mm-hmm. animated, you know, things and and animated series. And like I said, there's so many stories coming out. Um, and I think with, you know, the Black Panther being such a big hit, now we're seeing this influx of, you know, black superheroes and black uh, comic worlds that are starting to come out that, you know, I feel, you know, a lot of the big studios are going to start coming to the independent to really put these animations and, and stories out there. So I'm excited about the time, really, myself. Yeah, let me say, like I said, same here, and and it's happening. I mean, I the if anything, one of the things that came out of last year was the fact that people are hungry for content. You know, yeah. we yeah. were we were in the house. Yeah, you know, we had nothing to do but watch TV. Yeah. And but even before that, I think as these streaming. Um, provider wars right. continue to yeah. heat up, <laughs> you're going to see them reaching more into um, more indie or lesser known comic yeah. book series or properties or even the same with prose novels. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but yeah. Well, I, like you said, I think people are not only hungry for content, but they're hungry for different content, just for, different yeah. stories, different characters. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know about you, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of like, you know, Furious Nine and Eight and all these other ones. Yeah, remaking all these episodes oh, and gotcha. coming up with okay, Fast and Furious Eight, Fast and Furious Nine, and just you know, they're just rehashing these stories when there's so many, you know, great original stories, original mm-hmm. characters. Uh, out there that people are just hungry to see, which is why they're turning to YouTube streaming services online to get this content that they're just not getting at the theaters or, you know, on regular TV. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to talk, like I said, you got uh, your uh, latest project, which uh, was just released uh, with the video game. Uh, mm-hmm. We're going to show that. And I had a, a Gal- Phantom Galaxies. Phantom Galaxies, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're getting ready to let me show that little trailer there. Um, okay. Very interesting uh, for sure. I got this down now. <laughs> <laughs> Currently, we have two starfighters available, an assault unit and a buster unit. The assault unit, the CSF tier, is a balanced unit, perfect for mid-range engagement with options for close and long-range combat. The buster unit, the USF Kierkegaard, is a heavy unit, focused on defense and firepower, sacrifices speed and evasion for sheer raw destructive strength. Awesome, awesome. I'm curious, <laughs> how was your experience, you know, working on, on that and, and, you know, doing the writing for that? What was your experience like? Um, eye-opening. <laughs> so it's just like, <laughs> you know, I, it's one of those things where um, I, I've, you know, we talked about this before. My goal has been to write as much as I can in as many in many different places as possible. Um, some of the folks that I I follow and that I, I love, you know, uh, have done that. You know, N.K. Jemison, in addition to writing her own awesome series of novels, has done prose work for Mass Effect. You know, so it's just working in different mediums. You have uh, comic book writers, um, even TV writers who have jumped between different mediums. So for me, this is something that 
I, I've been I've been applying for <laughs> video game writing jobs for a minute, you know. So it's it's like for this to actually come through uh, was a blessing. So, uh, but it's been a learning process. Uh, you know, like I said, I um, I've been involved a lot on the lore building side of things. Yeah, you're helping to kind of build the the world of Phantom Galaxy. So. You know, as players are kind of immersed in in this game, you know, which I can finally talk about, or at least finally show. Like, man, when I showed that to my mom, I was like, "This is it! This is it!" I think that's you know, the hard part, having to, yeah. you know, keep your mouth shut in production right. and time. Yeah, and and I'm used to signing NDAs. Yeah, you know, that that's fine, but it's just like something as massive as what you just showed, and. As you see behind me, I love Trek. That is one of my favorite fandoms, if not number one. Yeah. So I love space operas. So when this dropped into my lap, a space opera with mech, <laughs> mech spaceships, yeah. I was just like, okay, I'm losing it. So, <laughs> um, so to be able to kind of help build the history and the, um, you know, the, you know, I guess kind of the storylines of of that world, you know, with with you know with the lore has been pretty awesome. And then you know, you know, working with um you know some of the scripting you know with with some of the um you know with at least some of the um, the game you know this game has been you know built because i i'm i'm i might be i guess you could say kind of the new kid on block yeah you know with you know with this so there was a lot of and i never want to give the impression that you know i came in i came on board and helped you know this was i was the only person so it's just like there was a big part of a lot of this um stuff that had already been written and built yeah. and it was just and i was just helping to I guess because they kind of flesh it out and you know um you know build it to kind of where it is now so i'm like a small component of like a, a, a very large team um but you know i always say shout out to blowfish for you know giving me my shot you know and and this is another you know portfolio credit or resume you know yeah. builder and you know just all the good stuff so um but it's been um because as with any any form of writing that I've, you know, new form of writing that I've jumped into or that, you know, or that I've studied. Um, it's, you know, I, I'm sometimes learning as I go along, you know, but in addition to bringing the years of, like I said, creative writing experience that I have to, you know, help them get the final product to where it needs to be. But um, at times it's been nerve wracking, you know, because you want to do your best. You know, as creators, I think we we are our own worst critics. Yeah. You know, so nobody can come at me as hard as I can. <laughs> come know, at yourself. Browbeat myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. and that's and because this has been new, you know, sometimes there have been some stumbles. You know, this ain't been perfect. Yeah. It's the same thing with comics. So everything like if you go back and read my first book, Daddy's Little Girl, I'm far <laughs> away from where I started out at. So um I feel you I, there. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. But um, I've enjoyed the process. I've learned. I've contributed, and to you know when when I saw that trailer, I was like, I, I think this is something that a lot of people are going to be able to get behind. It's um, it's a beautiful looking game. Yeah. You know, it's it's very action oriented, uh, space battles, and you know, I just love being able to you know have the function of. You know, switching between like a mech, you know, mech yeah. fighter yeah. for you know people who are into like Robotech and um, you know things like that, into just like a starfighter, which is you know kind of maybe somewhat reminiscent of the dog fights from um, Star Wars, yeah. you know that type of thing. But um, yeah, I've, um, it's it's been a very enriching experience. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. Through this, through your whole process or your whole your your, your journey thus far. What do you think has been kind of the biggest thing that you've learned along the way? I mean, to this point. Mm -hmm. Try to be patient. I think that's one thing. Um, and I, um, because in, in indie comics, there are times where things don't happen, you know, right off the bat. Sometimes it's for financial reasons. Sometimes yeah. it might be for you know, time constraints, it just, but you have to be patient. Um, but the other side of that is um, things are going to happen when they're supposed to. I, um, and that's something I still need to remember nowadays because um, there are doors that are, that are stay closed yeah. know, for a while. 
which I have not been able to open. Like I, I told you, I was, I um, always tell the story. I came out of the, um, and I don't want to jump, jump ahead with your questions, but no. with the, you know, with the writer's workshop, you know, when I came out of DC, everybody's advice was like, use your, you know, time spent in that, um, in that workshop. And then also your Green Lantern story that you wrote, the John Stewart story and try to open the doors of these publishers, you know, you know, you're going to be able to use that plus your experience and within indie comics to open doors, um, to open like doors of like the larger companies yeah. that does not happen. Yeah. And that was like back in 2017. Yeah. It just is what it is. It hasn't even happened with DC comics. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's just, and I've, and I've knocked and I kept knocking, um, to the point where I was, um, it was frustrating. Like my wife will tell you, like yeah. I was it, um, you know, when I couldn't open those doors with the experience that I had, um, I was kind of driving myself crazy to a certain extent because I started to question, you know, personally speaking, was it me? Yeah. You know, was it something yeah. that I was lacking and then this and that? And as creative, sometimes we, we tend to get in our heads and that partly actually happened with the, the video game, you know, publishers or the, um, developers that I was reaching out to, not even for like, you know, big, big work. It was like basic stuff. So, yeah. uh, doors have stayed closed. Um, but it's one of those things where you have to realize that you have to find other doors, which will open, which was happen, um, on a lot of fronts with indie comic books. And that's to be honest with you for the past, always 17, 18, 19, 21 for the past five years, yeah. <laughs> you know, I yeah. count on my fingers, yeah. uh, for the past five years, uh, indie comic books have been my bread and butter, you know, for the past few years. And they are the ones that have stepped up and said, we want you. Yeah. That's yeah. just kind of how it, that's kind of where, where I'm at right now. Um, so, so be patient and, um, realize that doors are going to open when they're supposed to, you know, definitely don't, you know, don't try, um, because there are lessons learned with trying and, you know, the door's not opening. Yeah. Um, but you know, they're hard lessons, yeah. you know, at times and, yeah. but, uh, and nothing happens overnight. I mean, if it happens overnight, then t- you know, t- you know, take your coins and, and invest, yeah. pay off those college debts, <laughs> you know, and all that good yeah, stuff. But, um, yeah, don't, debt. that that's, that's another advice, uh, something I haven't been able to do because I haven't made those coins yet, but, uh, pay off your college loans <laughs> and then ball out of control. Jeez, you know, so don't, do you. Yeah. don't do I, the opposite. I had just paid day. mine off a couple of years ago, and I graduated bro. in '87. So that tells you how long I it mm. took for me to. So, uh, yeah. but it's interesting, uh, you know, that you kind of talk about that, in the sense that, um, which kind of goes back to you know what we were just talking about as far as this being a great time for content creators to get their own stories out and mm-hmm. and really you know, make that mark um, and that they don't necessarily have to wait. If you're an animator, you don't necessarily have to wait for Disney or you have Mm -hmm. to wait to get into Pixar if you're a a storyteller that wants to animate, things like that. We have these channels. Do you think that that's kind of the, the sticking point with most creators? They're trying so hard to get into these big studios that they don't kind of see the trees for the forest that they're trying to look at mm-hmm. i i think there are some who um who i think there are some artists and, and writers who that that's their main focus yeah it's always been um the big two which is not a problem yeah. which is not a problem um and if that's where your focus is and continue to shoot for it i think it's going to be a hard road um, um, it's a difficult road. It's a very difficult road, um, to travel, but, and, but I do feel that, you know, having your, using your talents for something that is your own, it, it, it makes you feel so good. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. It makes you feel so good. But then you have something that, um, at the end of the day, you know, if you have a, you know, one of the, the best ways I know on the writing front um that you get in front of larger companies and it's not just marvel and dc i mean there's image yeah. there's boom studios there's only press there's um valiant there there are a yeah. lot of like big mid, companies mid, that yeah. you, mid-level you know, like kind of mid-level so um 
Marvel and DC aren't always just it. And they put out quality stuff. But I, I feel that if you do stuff independently, as a writer, I can't get in front of a larger company without a published work. Yeah. So that's the thing. You can't go with their script. So we have no choice as writers but to go into indie comics yeah. <laughs> or to yeah. do something um, that is completed. You know, I mean, you can. So that that's that's a piece of advice that I always try to tell writers is that nobody's going to listen to you unless yeah. you have something done. Um, you can self-publish it. So for that reason alone, if you want to get in front of a larger company and even then one work is not going to cut it. You need, um, you need legions of, I hate to put it like this. Sometimes you need followers. You you need people who are talking about your work, you know, to get in front of those publishers. Um, so you can definitely, I, I feel though that you do yourself a disservice if that's all, if that's all you're shooting for. I think that, um it helps to have your own thing that you're known for but then also you can make a little bit of money off of but it's at the end of the day it's yours and it's um and you didn't have to wait on somebody to do it i mean you probably have to wait on getting the cash you know or finding well i mean even now you got Mm -hmm. like i said if you're good at it there's platforms like like we just saw kickstarter Mm -hmm. that you can Mm -hmm. fund you know get your own funding to do like i said i know several uh and have had on several Mm -hmm. i mean uh marcus they've done a kickstarter with uh you know tuskegee air newton yeah. uh Le- yeah. that I had on, yeah for for yeah. his comic does some mm-hmm. great kickstarter stuff so that's in, and that's why i say i think the beauty of it is if you you tend one you tend like you said to be able to control your own content and your own story mm-hmm. and own narrative and two like i said if you you know do it right and really work hard at it and build that following nine times out of ten you know if a big studio is the route you want to go um Mm -hmm. they're going to come probably looking for you or some kind of opportunity is going to present itself i don't think you should wait to not put your content out there or try to okay I'm just going to go after Pixar or I'm just going to go after DC or just going to go after Marvel. When you're a comic book creator, you can put your, or a writer that writes for comic books. You can, you know, partner with a, a comic artist and put your content out there just to start to build traction. And, you know, like I said, you never know, get to the point yeah. where you don't even have to go to DC and it's really, you're able to generate a, a great mass of following and living from it. Right. Right. Uh, I'm curious, have you ever thought about flexing you know, your writing skills outside of, you know, maybe like I said, writing a live screenplay or a TV show or <clears throat> excuse me, something like that, or, you know, yeah. writing a book of that's not, sci-fi or maybe a a comedy or a love story have you ever thought about you know doing that or do you just feel like you know comics and things is kind of your flow and 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 lane Mm -hmm. um i'm you know i uh, (laughs) strange it's funny enough i've thought about doing a um you know a a kind of a rom-com yeah for um for for blurbs you know, for black nerds, you know, from our experience, I yeah. mean, we have, we have plenty of, um, plenty, plenty of works like that for, uh, I, Caucasians, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. For me. Um, but I, I think that that's something that, and then there might've been people who already have gotten into this space, you know, you know, with that, but, um, I think I might, I think about my, you know, times is, you know, working the table at a convention. There are plenty of entertaining stories to be told, you know, <laughs> yeah, from sure. the opposite side of the table. <laughs> yeah, like it was, uh, having a, I had a conversation with a conspiracy theorist um, when I was trying to sell a copy of Route 3 and that just escalated, it was weird. Um, so, you know, stuff like that, um, you know, that that was like, you know, like a comedy, maybe a romantic comedy. Um, there, I, I find myself also wanting to um 
do stuff like I, I think the the most recent thing that I've done along those lines was like I said that that western mm-hmm. um, and I'm a I'm a huge fan of you know you know westerns which you know try to kind of show what life was really like you know yeah, back yeah, then yeah. it's not this romanticized yeah you know version um, of, of things uh, I'm so hyped for the harder they fall. You know that's about to come out with um, uh, Idris Elba, yeah, yeah. Uh, the brother from Lovecraft Country, and um, Reg- um, um, forgetting it, Regina. I think it's Davis, uh, but anyways, I'm forgetting last names. But uh, that was something you know that was outside of my wheelhouse, and you know the opportunity presented itself. The guy was like, "Hey, do you write westerns?" And I was just like, "Oh, I can write." <laughs> so you know, I, I did. I did my homework. I sat down, put finger to keyboard with, you know, you know, I wrote something and yeah. uh, it was, it's in the anthology. So I, I, um, I do have a desire to do that. And also even working within um, screenwriting, like I haven't done much of that, but like last year um, it was one of the gigs that popped up during COVID because I wrote a pilot for an animated sci-fi series mm. and I had never done that. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd been studying the field of screen, you know, screenwriting, you know, screenplay writing or screenwriting and, the, you know, the opportunity just, you know, popped up and, you know, the end result was the client was happy with it. Yeah. So that yeah. was, so that was, you know, something kind of outside of my wheelhouse, but then also content wise, I, I would like to do more Westerns that actually turned out to be a pretty uh, fun experience. Um, but then also, you know, the romantic comedy, I think, you know, with a focus on black nerds, yeah, because uh, I think that's a space that can be kind of dug into. Because, like you know, like I said, we're we're not mon- mon- monolithic. You know, yeah. there's a lot of you know things that we've spoken about. So, you know, those are those are a couple of things that come to mind. And you know, I'm I'm a big fan of folks who can jump between different genres. You know, yeah. like or different things like you know, Ava DuVernay, Steven Spielberg. Yeah. Um, you know, just um, a lot of different you know, creators can do that and they find success with it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, like I said, even though it may not be the, the, the kind of lane that you stay in or live in, it does kind of flex your muscles and really kind of give you kind of a, some experience and, and challenge in going yeah. outside of what your norm is. Um, mm-hmm. like I said, I did, which I just saw, uh, watched the other day um and your reference to cowboys made me think about it but cowboys and aliens i thought it was a great okay movie. The, yeah. and the way they just meshed the two you know cowboys mm-hmm. sci-fi type of thing um which i think is derived from a comic uh comic book um yeah you know yeah. kind of meshing sure. those worlds i always think find very fascinating and very interesting yeah so what, I mean, um, for you, obviously, you pull a lot of inspiration from a lot of different places. I mean, who, who are some of the ones um, that writers that really kind of inspire you? Oh, uh, man. <laughs> Just a uh, few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I got a list. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the and I know people are like new sacrilegious don't say this my trinity is um Dwayne McDuffie mm-hmm. um Octavia Butler and Richard Wright so those okay. are those are like my my top three in yeah. terms of you know who the writers that have inspired me so those are those are you know the top three um Christopher Golden is a comic book writer, slash, you know, pro- prose novelist who, what, the first time that I started reading a lot of licensed fiction, you know, like prose, like novels, which were based on comic books, were a lot of his books. So that's that's what another person that made me realize, oh, you can write novels on about uh, comic books and get paid for it. You know, so yeah. Christopher Golden is one um, one creator that I'm. Um, a huge fan of uh actually Issa Rae uh more recently is somebody that I I'm really admiring her hustle and just her creative output um 
comic book wise, Brandon Easton, Brandon Thomas, um, uh, God, um, and I, I, there, there, there are a lot of other folks that I, um, that I, I'm having a brain yeah. fart, I'm freeze on, freeze there's on. There's just but so many, you know. And yeah, there's, it's a lot. There, there's a lot. So a lot. many. For yeah. all you uh, viewers just tuning in, we're having, <clears throat> excuse me, we are having a fun sit down with my friend and guest, Mr. Robert Jeffrey II, comic book writer and video game writer. Um, what's been the best, what's for you, what's been the best part of being editor in chief, uh, for black sci-fi? Uh, you know, the, um, I would say the content, you know, we, uh, it's, I said, you know, growing up, there was no black sci-fi.com, you know, there was no internet. There (laughs) was no, I think the closest to that would have been wizard magazine. Shout, Shout out to the wizard magazine generation where like we would get a monthly insight into the comic books that were coming out and, you know, who would win in this fight and interviews with the creators. And actually there was one creator, I forgot, Greg Rucka. Uh, he's, he's, um, Oh God, Greg Rucka. Anyway, so he's a great, great, <laughs> uh, great creator. Um, but, you know, interviews with guys like him, but so black sci-fi as far as the content, because our focus is, you know, is on um, members of the As- African diaspora and, um, you know, black folks who are creating in these spaces, these fantastical spaces, in addition to contributing to STEM, you know, to our, um, because we, you um, you know, tech is, you know, tech is king, you know, and we, and science just in general, even though there are a lot of people who would try to deny science. Um, and we, we show that we are a part of those worlds, all of these worlds. So the content that we, you know, we're able to mine uh, is something that I just geek out over. Yeah. You know, sometimes our writers will bring like, hey, let me pitch you a uh, top 10. We just recently did a the top 10 um, books for science fiction and fantasy books for younger readers. And I'm, I'm over there like writing some of these books down because I haven't heard <laughs> of them and I never heard of them. And, and the way um, uh, Latanya, our, our writer who did the uh, story was like, so hyped up about each of these 10 books. I was just, you know, I was like, wow, this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, we, you know, we have interviews with game developers, um, we have interviews with, uh, I think, we've, you know, gaming streamers, you yeah. know, who stream on, you know, their games on Twitch. Uh, and also I, I did an interview with Nichelle Nichols. Like, this was a oh, while wow. back. Yeah, yeah. I so as a Trekkie, boy. I mean, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I almost, love <laughs> Yeah. I almost lost it. So <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I think the content, the content for me is key. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a huge thing. And, yeah. and we have a talented group of writers who look at these stories um, you know, when it's, you know, um, from perspectives that I don't feel that a lot of other, you know, you know, larger, more mainstream, I guess you could say, websites look at, um, yeah. we were talking about the things that they are now talking about <laughs> way before. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, that's kind of, that's, uh, but I, I, content is really big for that. I mean, yeah. for me, when it comes to the website. Now, it, and, and it's, it's like you said, it's, it gives such a, a opportunity for for stories and contents that you wouldn't necessarily, um, mm-hmm. you know, hear. And I don't know if you and I love listening to uh, uh, his podcast. Um, Labar Burton has yeah. uh, mm-hmm. uh, Labar Burton reads, and he reads, you know, uh, sci- I guess you could say sci-fi, but kind of, uh, you know. Um, sci-fi short stories that mm-hmm. all, you know, all the other authors have read such great you, you you should check it out if you have it it's mm-hmm. it's got such great short story fantastical stories that authors yes. that you wouldn't have you know come across or heard about um and uh, otherwise known about and having those type of channels really does expose people to like you said, writers, uh, mm-hmm. artists, content creators that you just wouldn't see or wouldn't hear about, which is why I do this show. 
people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love bringing, like I said, really highlighting talent that, you know, is just, is just out there for sure. Um, where do you kind of, I mean, where do you see, you know, Robert Jeffrey moving towards in the future? I mean, what are, you know, kind of some of your high level goals and things that you want to do? There, um, I, I want to, you know, still be writing full time, you know, so that that's one thing. Um, I want to be in a position where that is, um, there's never going to be a question about if that's going to be a thing. So that that's, you know, that's one major goal. Um, Creatively, personally, on the on the personal front, uh, there are two properties that I want to at least have um, that I want to put out in the world. Yeah. You know, so one, one being Route 3, you know, continue to put out there. And another one is uh, actually, let's say three. And there are two other ideas that have been kind of rumbling around in my mind. But I want to put those out myself, you know, that I want to, you know, pull the trigger on that and on those two. And, and I, I think it'll, I think people will dig it. You know, dig those <laughs> two. So, um, so personally speaking, so those three route three and the two other unnamed projects and then three at least have built up a, a, a large enough following where, um, you know, people can find me yeah. without having to dig too deep. Yeah. Um, and, uh, just enjoy what I'm doing. Uh, and I and continue to grow relationships with you know publishers and uh, clients so that they can look at me as a good go to yeah. for if they you know need whatever work done done you yeah. know yeah. on the creative front. Yeah. So those are those are a couple of things. But you know at the end of the day, just do what I love doing. You know, keep a roof over my family's head and yeah. food in our mouths and. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm very basic, <laughs> I'm very basic. Like folks, will, some folks will be like, yo, man, I just want it all to take over this industry. And I'm just like, uh, OK, uh, well, I think as creators, I think we all just want to be at this point, like you said, where we're doing what we love and still able yeah. to maintain and do have this life that we want, you know, mm-hmm. while we're doing what we love, which is writing, drawing, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Well, the, I mean, the, so the other part of that for me is that I know my lane and I know some people might say that's limiting yourself. And I'm like, no, it's just like, I can sit back and say, yo, I want to run a company. And I just, you know, and just like, I want to do it all. And, um, you know, I want to be the social media maven and I don't, Yeah. I just want to write. Yeah. I want to create. And, um, if I could hire somebody to do all the other stuff, like my website, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so I just got somebody to do it. So, yeah. uh, but I think sometimes, you know, focusing on whatever path you want to be on and maximizing your potential on that path yeah. instead of doing everything because I get distracted easy. Yeah. yeah. So easily. So that, that doesn't work for me. Yeah. And I've seen in certain cases that when you take on the world, you fall yeah. hard. Yeah. And, um, I'm tired of falling. I mean, I, I'm just like, I mean, I, I fall for other reasons, but I don't, like I said, no, I just, I think staying in your lane and just like I said, maximizing your potential with that, you'll be cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's interesting that you said that because even on, I think the business tip or Mm -hmm. an entrepreneur or business person, they'll tell you the same thing. They have strengths and they have weaknesses. They're smart enough to know to hire the people that fill Mm -hmm. in the gaps of what, one, they're not good at, and two, is better, their time is better spent doing something else and give it to somebody that is better at it than you are. Um, I think that makes a successful business person creative. Like I said, I can do... I can do web design and stuff like that, mm-hmm. but I don't like doing that. And really, right. that's not my <laughs> strength. So right. I would, you know, rather hire somebody to do that. You know, mm-hmm. hire somebody to code. I don't like coding. So mm-hmm. hire somebody that's much better at it than me. Like you, I would much rather hire a social pe- social media person that 
that yeah. is what they do and that's what they enjoy doing. So yeah. knowing, like you said, even as a business person, as an entrepreneur, they know their lane and what they're good at. And they hire, they bring in people that are much better at it in all the other places that they have to fill. Um, so yeah. that's just, that's, that's, you know, business entrepreneur one-on-one, you, you, you're you you not going to be able to do everything, you know, and yeah. you wouldn't want to do everything. Well, I mean, and there's no shame in acknowledging that you can't do everything. Yeah. Like there's like, if you, you know, and I think some people get hung up on that and just feel that like it's the end of the world because they can. And that's just like, no, you, you not. I mean, no, and, no. And, and, and like I say, every successful you know, entrepreneur out there would tell you that they mm -hmm. they've they gotten themselves to the point where they do acknowledge that they can't yeah. do it alone. They can't do everything. Otherwise, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be successful because they would have burned out and just gone crazy trying to do mm -hmm. it alone. The the ones that aren't successful <clears throat> are the ones that haven't learned to let go and. Mm -hmm. bring and trust people in that are much better than much smarter. Steve Jobs will tell you the same thing or would have right. told you the same thing. He brought much smarter people in that were doing the things to make Apple what it is. Any, any entrepreneur will tell you that, mm -hmm. you know, that I surround myself around much smarter people. Yep. That's the way they, become successful so don't feel yeah. bad at it i mean it's just that's what you should do as a creative if that's not your lane do what you do good and you'll get yourself to the point to where you know you get a social media person that will help you fill in that gap just like i do you know i'll eventually get a social media person that will I could have step in the gap. It took me the longest just to get a, a, a assistant. You know, I I was yeah. one of those ones that felt like I needed to do everything, <clears throat> mm -hmm. but then quickly realized that one that burned me out quick trying to do yeah. everything and realizing that you know you can't do everything and you don't want to do everything. So you're gonna have to learn to let go of some things and so it took me a, a, a little bit of, of learning on that and you know my goal <clears throat> with this show is to definitely highlight you know what you're doing promote everything that you're doing to get you out there um you know i'm definitely pushing the show even after this episode for everybody that's tuning in you know, all these links will be in uh, the show notes on YouTube. Definitely make sure you check out these links. Check out what Robert's doing. He's doing such amazing work. Um, and so looking forward to having him back on to talk about all the new things that and future things that he has coming out. Um, and like I said, mm -hmm. the color of motion is here to to help support you. This family is here to help support you, Robert, uh, and just you know get your work out there and really show people what you can do. Because I'm super super excited to see the things that are going to be coming from you for sure. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. No, no, no worries, no worries. Um, like I said, I have, you know, we are coming up for two hours, and I've definitely kept you way longer. <laughs> and like I said, I, I'm, I'm a, I guess I'm a, I'm a blur, blurred, blurb, a I mean, nerd, you know, blurred, nerd, I mean, <laughs> blurred, you know, nerd. Nerd, I, you know I'm, I you was know, always I mean, kind of a geeky. Well, I wouldn't say geeky, yeah. but I was, I was felt like I was in that kind of, you know middle middle ground i wasn't a jock but i wasn't yeah. a complete nerd but i did like you know kind of you know the the, the geeky kind of stuff and cartoons and things like that mm -hmm. and so you know i just like you said you're who you are and yeah. you know that's i think what when you find who you are that's where your strength lies um and 
like I said, I love cartoons and comics, which is why I wanted to do this. This was something that I loved. Um, and so awesome. I've just had a blast connecting with people uh, such as yourself that are writers. I'm not a writer, but I do like to, you know, I have ideas and stories in my head. So it's always great to get a perspective of how can I get, you know, pen to paper, my mm-hmm. ideas and story-wise down in a cohesive type of way. I mean, for yeah. you, this is my last question for you. For you, yeah, what's sure. your process? I mean, when you sit down, do you have a process for writing or do you just sit down and just start typing? I need some type of order. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, um, so for me, it begins at a, um, I might do a uh, mental kind of uh, kind of just laying it all out onto in notes, you know, random yeah. notes. Um, but after that, I do kind of transition it to an actual outline. So the outline could be like, you know, uh, set up conflict resolution. This is what's going to happen in your setup. This is going to happen in conflict resolution. Um, and one of the things I actually know in comics is I do a breakdown by page. So that way I know to how much space to a lot to a certain scene or to a certain action, you know, what's going to happen. Uh, so that, that helps me out. So you begin with the notes, go do some form of outlining, and then I'll go on to the script. And with uh, comic books, it's usually your page, you break it down by page and panels. And I usually try to keep my panel to at least like four to five. I don't I don't try to go to seven because I'm not Brian Michael Bendis. You know, so <laughs> shout out to the comic book fans uh, who know what I'm talking about. Or I'm not Warren. Um, I'm not, a, not, I was about to say Tom McFarlane, Alan Moore. I'm not Alan Moore. So I can do Bendis some more. So, um, but within those panel descriptions, um, it'll give some idea of the action that's taken place. Uh, and then, you know, you have your dialogue, which which comes with or narration or sound effects. Uh, so that's the normal process for me before it gets to an editor. And then it might go through one pass of edits. It might go through several passes, you know, for edits. I remember even with, with like the DC Comics thing, uh, we went through several passes. So mm-hmm. it's just it's what it is. It was my first time and first and only time. But yeah. doing a, um, a story at that level. So definitely it was going to be a bit more involved. Uh, sometimes I might have a script that, you know, with um, with some publishers where it's just gone through one round yeah. of edits. So, uh, but that's normally, at least with the comic book writing side of things, the, the process, kind of a general process of, of of what I go through. Yay, John Stewart. <laughs> the yeah, bottom right, yeah, so. yeah. yeah. So, I mean, was I, that, I, for you, was, obviously you said the process is a little different, like for mm-hmm. a company like DC as opposed to yeah. an indie. Um mm-hmm. For what was the biggest thing that you kind of, I mean, the biggest, I guess, kind of, was that the biggest challenge kind of going through those many iterations or process with DC as a, as you would a independent or? Um, the, I, you know, in certain ways, I, I feel the process creatively was still the same because, you know, with, you know, as far as on the back end, when you, you get the script to, the artists and the you know the art team and then the lettering actually lettering was actually pretty interesting but um the writing stage um I, you know it's i'm trying to think you know my difficulties in any and if it wasn't any difficulties was you, you wanted to keep i and, and let me i think the best way to explain this I looked at this story as being the only shot that I was ever going to have to write at this level. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to go all out. <clears throat> you know, I wanted to, I wanted to tell this kind of core story because the, the, the story that I'm dealing with is um, John Stewart goes to this um, planet that's been taken over by um, a yellow lantern. I, and I'm, her name is, I, I hate that. I'm, mis- I'm forgetting her name, but uh, she's been able to tap into the the hatred and the bigotry of the other and um use that to take over like i said it's, it's a bit more involved you know than than that but um a little bit of social commentary mixed in yeah. actually i got to mention the black lives matter mixed in but in my mind 
I wanted to tell this core story, but then also I wanted to treat this as something like big and epic and, you know, yada, yada, yada. I was like, this is, this is going to be my shot. They're going to remember me for days, for ages, <laughs> you know, years and stuff. And, and my editor was just like, no, you don't have to do that so much. I, I just remember, like, I, I wanted to open up with this shot of like Stuart flying through space and, um, you know, so we could see him with this on this backdrop of just like a black man in space. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, like this, this yeah. beautiful shot. And she was just like, we can get him to the planet, <laughs> you know, just already. We don't have to do all that. And I was just like, but this is my only shot. I only got 12, I only got 12 pages. Yeah, you know? So yeah, yeah. that was, you know, so sometimes less is more. And it's funny because coming from Indies, like you sometimes don't have it. You know, I mean, actually sometimes you do have the freedom to do that, but uh, that is one of the things that was ingrained in my mind is just like less is more. But when you're looking at this, like am I even getting into the writer's workshop for me, it was like a one in a million shot. I had applied like this is my second time applying. And then I was accepted the, the second time. So and then when they tell me that, oh, yeah, we, we, we chose you based on your work on Route Brand Radio Free America out of like thousands of applicants. In my mind, I'm like sitting at my desk doing the data entry. Like, what the what is going on? So, that's, <laughs> so from that moment on, I'm constantly in my head about, is this enough? Yeah. So when I got a chance to put, you know, once again, fingers to keyboard, I just wanted to do it all. And I didn't need to do that. Um, and that's what you see, you know? So that's kind of where my mind was at when yeah. it came to, you know, going through that editorial process. Um, and it wasn't like crazy difficult. Um, and they weren't asking like a lot of me in terms of like, you know, um, it wasn't, sometimes it didn't feel any different than going through a, you know, a process with any publisher. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, at least the, the ones that are good quality indie publishers who know the questions to ask, who know the changes that need to be made to tell a good story. You know, shout out to 133 Arts, shout out to Crescent, you know, um, you know Studios, Subsume Media, yeah. Ray Comics, uh, Myth Division. Um, sometimes, you know, I it was it felt like I was. I, I was prepared. I was prepared for what came, but I, I think I was thinking too big because um, I wanted to do a lot with that story. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so. well, and and you know, as we close this up, like I said, I think with you know your stories that you're coming out, which is why, like I said, um, not just you know what you're doing for even say, you know may or may do for DC Comics or Marvel or any other other big ones out there. I, I'm looking forward to the ones where you're able to push those boundaries of the stories that you're really wanting to tell. Thank and you, still man. tell it in an engaging way because I think that's I think that's been kind of the the misstep early on with mm -hmm. a lot of the bigger comics is they didn't take that opportunity to explore those deep social issues or backstory mm -hmm. of a lot of the characters, uh, black characters like Luke Cage or, or even any of the other ones. Uh, and I think that's why I like this time now because they are taking these steps, not only DC and some of the bigger ones, but a lot of the more independent uh, creators are really saying, okay, hey, now we're in this position with the with the, uh, world that we're living in and being able to put out our own content. We can dive deeper into these characters and backstories yeah. um, and really tell engaging stories. And, and it's not just a black thing. It could be Asian. Uh, it could be no. uh, uh, Latino. Uh, you're seeing a lot of great characters and a lot of great stories now where the creators are now have this power to tell, you know, really deep stories. Really, And like you said, we're even within a race, we're not monolithic. You know, we mm -hmm. all got these different flavors even within our own races. 
um, and now yeah. in this position to tell these stories. So that's why I'm excited about, you know, and you being able to tell these deeper stories and deeper things that are going on and com- them coming out. So, you know, you, yeah. this platform here and the Color of Motion family here is is always open to really highlight that for you, Robert. And so I'm excited about, you know, just the new things that are coming from you. Thank you, man. Thanks. I, I, I appreciate that. <laughs> that. No worries. I hope everybody has uh, been enjoying this. Uh, if you do uh, happen to have tuned in late, uh, you can always check out uh, the full episode on the YouTube channel, which will be up uh this weekend uh but all the links the link to the kickstarter the link to the video game and black sci-fi.com all these links will be uh in the show notes that you could check out for sure again uh definitely make sure that you like i said uh connect with uh robert uh let me throw in his info here uh, where you can uh, connect with him. Check out his uh, website. You'll see some awesome work. RobertKJeffrey.com Also, you can find him on Facebook, RobertK.Jeffrey Instagram, where you can see even more work. Uh, And you can also connect with him on LinkedIn, which is how I connected with him for sure. (laughs) Uh, but all these social channels, all his social channels, make sure that you reach out, uh, support his work, support the Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. You know, our goal is to undergird and support all these creatives that we have uh, coming through the, and part of the Color of Motion family. So we want to thank you there, Robert. Robert, if you could. Just hang out in the green room for a minute while I close yeah. out the show. Uh, yeah, that way, okay. afterwards, I can thank you properly again. Uh, but again, everybody, uh, please uh, oops, help me. Got me covered here. Uh, help me uh, again. Uh, thank my very special guest and friend. Uh, Robert for coming on and looking forward to having you back on the show Robert thanks man All right, (laughs) guys it's been uh, as always a fun episode I've always enjoyed like I said I may start out a little you know uh, before the show kind of dream but the show the guests Um, And just the whole preparation always energizes me. And so I always end up just so jazzed afterwards. Um, Dream, because it's it's tough putting the show together and interviewing, but always uh, just so inspired and so uh, thankful to have had the opportunity to engage with my friends and stuff. So again... Make sure that you uh, jump in and become a part of the Facebook group community, facebook.com slash groups slash the color of motion. Like I said, we got a lot of, I got a lot of great things planned for the, for the show and just slowly unveiling them for sure. This was uh, unveiled a couple of months ago. The group is starting to grow. People are starting to come in. So we definitely want you to be a part of it for sure. Um, Again, you can always, always, always connect with me on my social channels. I got it right this time. (laughs) Connect with me on my social channels. I want to hear from you. I want you to be engaged uh, for sure. Like I said, we're starting to step up uh, the Instagram uh, game a little. Been doing uh, some reels and some uh, you know Instagram stories before the before the show starts. I may do uh, some uh, broadcasts during the show, uh, some little Instagram lives during the show. 
Uh, we got to set that up, but we're definitely trying to get people into uh, the Instagram, our Instagram. So make sure you connect with me uh, in the show on Instagram. Instagram, uh, you can find me at the Color of Motion for sure. We definitely want you to be a part of that because you will see some stuff that you probably won't see on the Facebook page. Like I said, um, just some before. Uh, before the show scenes and uh, some after the show. So definitely going to have some, uh, you know, private content there for sure. Uh, we always, always, always uh, enjoy your support for sure. We definitely want to get the channel <clears throat> channel growing. So, you know, we uh, appreciate your support. If you do, you can definitely get a uh we definitely want to give you a shout out for sure if you you know so choose to support the channel let me stop that there that didn't come out right uh we definitely want you to uh you know kind of support the channel there let me jump over to this scene here all right all right so if you do support the channel we will uh give you a shout out there uh, you know we always want to give uh, a big shout out and thank you for everybody that kind of supports the channel there we're definitely looking to one bring on sponsors that align with the show and uh definitely have in on the interview ease on and uh really give a shout out to people for sure uh so like i said we got a lot of big things planned for the show that we are looking to uh unveil you know let me put this on these are coming on again make sure that you uh jump on over Connect with me on my YouTube channel. Uh, check out a lot of the great episodes that we have. Oh, like I said, coming up soon uh, is, you know, one year anniversary. You know, a little over a month. We're going to be having a very special uh, one year anniversary show. We're going to be promoting that. And you definitely don't want to miss that because we're really putting together a great show for that so we definitely want you to tune in be a part of our one year celebration can't believe it's come up on one year of doing the show already it goes by so quick for sure um but i have uh enjoyed it immensely and i think the guests have had a big part of that for sure Make sure that you tune in next week because it's going to be another great show for sure. We got another great guest coming on, Mr. Dion Wilson, founder and vision sort of source of Raster. Uh, and the let me play that again so you can see. Uh, founder and vision source of Raster, the Multiverse, and Titanium Content Comics. They got a great app for comic book creators. So looking forward to sitting down and talking with him about uh, what that's all about um, and how it's going to benefit the independent comic creator. So that's going to be a good one for sure. It's been a great day and a great episode. And I want to thank all the viewers for tuning in, all the future ones that are going to check out the episode later. Uh, always enjoy having you become a part of the family and tune in. So make sure that, again, you tune in next week. Great show. Same bat time, same bat channel. Everybody have a great weekend and have a great week. I will see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>